Hello, my name is David Silver and I lead the C++ Nano Degree Program at Udacity. And we are super excited to talk with you today about what the Nano Degree Program covers, what we teach, who's teaching it, and the projects that you'll do as part of the program. Um, so, uh, so I'll start off by talking about the program at a high level. Um, the program is a five-month nano degree program each month spent on a different topic. The first month is spent on the foundations of C++. The second month is spent on object-oriented programming in C++. The third month is spent on memory management in C++. And the fourth month is spent on concurrency in C++. The fifth month, or really more like half of a month, is spent on a capstone project, which is an independent project that you will do using all of the different skills that you've learned, or at least many of the different skills that you've learned as part of the Nano Degree program. Um, this program is designed for software engineers who already know how to program, but are interested in learning C++ to pursue one of the many different career lines um, and types of jobs that require C++. C++ is um, a fairly old language. Uh, this is actually its 40th birthday or anniversary this year. It was created in 1979. Um, but it's really undergone a kind of renaissance um, in the last few years, um, both because of updates that have been made to the language to make it a more modern language, um, and also because of the importance of C++ for running um, on embedded hardware and real-time systems, things like self-driving cars or drones um, or medical equipment um, or any type of, of electronics or system that requires super fast performance um, and needs to run very close to the hardware. And that actually describes a lot of different um, types of, of software applications uh, these days. Um, so we're excited to teach C++. Um, each month of the Nano Degree program is taught by a different instructor, um, but a couple of the people who will be kind of consistent across the entire program are myself um, and Bjarne Strustrup, who is the creator of C++. Um, Bjarne uh, appears um, at multiple different points throughout the Nano Degree program um, to talk about why language developed the way it did, um, how um, students might think about developing C++ and how he thinks about using different features of the C++ programming language. Um, Bjarne is uh, the creator of C++. He is um, still very, very active in the development of C++, and he's been very gracious um, in sharing his knowledge with um, students of C++, um, both in this program and in many other programs. Bjarne has a, a number of textbooks that are all terrific about the C++ programming language, and he spent 12 years as a professor teaching C++ as well. Um, so uh, with, uh, with those, uh, that kind of background uh, leading into the program, um, let's talk about what will go on in each of the months of the C++ Nano Degree program. Um, so the first month of the program covers the foundations of C++, and this is taught by my Udacity colleague, Stephen Welch. That's Stephen right there. Stephen has worked uh, together with me for a long time at Udacity, first on the Self-Driving Car Engineer Nano Degree program, and then on other programs we've developed, and um, he is the primary teacher for the first month of our C++ Nano Degree program. And Stephen will be teaching you um, concepts like input and output, I.O. in C++, control flow, so things like conditionals and loops, um, functions, um, how to use um, tools from the standard library and different classes um, and, and objects that you would instantiate from the standard library. Uh, he and Bjarne together will talk about the C++ core guidelines, which is a really long set of guidance for how to write high quality modern C++ code. Um, he'll also introduce some concepts that you'll need for the, the project, the final project for this month. Each month has a final project. Uh, so you'll need to learn about pass by reference, which is a particular way of passing variables um, uh, between functions in C++. You'll also learn about different build tools like make and CMake and a couple of different compilers um, that you'll use to compile C++. C++, um, as you may or may not know, is a compiled programming language, which is different than a scripted programming language like, say, Python. Um, C++ is compiled um, down to executable code um, before you run it, and then uh, then you run it once you've built the executable. And so it's actually a two-step process, compile and then execute. Um, 
And you'll learn about that in this Foundations Month. And this is designed, this month is really designed to get <clears throat> everybody up to speed with the basics of C++ so we can progress with more advanced um, C++ topics. So the project at the end of this month is, um, is building a route planner using OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is a, a data set um, that has uh, data about um, really the entire world and about all the streets and paths and places in the world. And it allows you to build a Google Maps um, style um, uh, uh, Interface. Um, you can. Uh, we'll teach you how to use some graphics libraries um, to put together um, a, a Google Maps uh, style um, output, and then to uh, use the A star planning algorithm to uh, plot a route um, around a real city. This is actually uh, uh, the city of Austin, Texas. Um, any of you uh, from Texas may or may not recognize this street grid here. This is the Texas State Capitol. This is actually the, uh, the map that we use um, for the project um, uh, at the end of, of this first month of the program. Um, but you could also apply this to lots of other map data um, uh, for any place in the world that you might want to route a map between. So if you've ever wondered how when you pull up your phone, um, the computation is done to figure out the fastest route between where you are and your destination, you'll get to implement that um, at, the, uh, at the end of the first month of this, uh, of this program. Um, so that's the first month of the program, Foundations of C++. Um, the second month of the program is Object-Oriented Programming in C++. Now, of course, Object-Oriented Programming is a, a generic approach to uh, programming, generic in the sense that it, uh, it's not language-specific. Um, many, many different types of languages um, support object-oriented programming. Um, this course will be taught by Ermin Krepinich, who is um, uh, a C++ instructor. He's also taught a number of other courses in lots of different places. Um, and Ermin will be introducing you both to um, uh, the general concepts of object-oriented programming, um, but more specifically how to implement those concepts in C++. Um, so this is really a, a class about this course, this one-month course on object-oriented programming in C++, is really about how to do object-oriented programming in C++, um, and probably less about object-oriented programming um, more generally. Um, so Ehrman will teach you um, things like, or teach students things like classes, um, which are the foundation of object-oriented programming in C++, uh, constructors and destructors, so how do we instantiate and then destroy um, objects of, of a particular class, um, access modifiers, how do we update uh, data um, within a class um, from unintended uh, or malicious access. Um, uh, initialization lists, which are part of modern C++ and how, um, how you <coughs> uh, initialize uh, the members of a class when you instantiate it. And then he'll teach um, how to uh, perform basic object-oriented programming concepts or implement basic object-oriented programming concepts in C++. So things like encapsulation and abstraction. Um, so how do you encapsulate um, data within a class and how do you abstract away um, the data and, uh, and the functions you perform on that data so that all the user of the class has to know is what the interface to the class is and not the internals of the class structure. Um, he'll also teach inheritance and composition which are two ways um, to relate classes to each other. Um, a class can inherit uh, from a parent class or it can be composed of other classes. Um, and uh, and we'll, you'll learn about how both of those um, uh, patterns work in C++. Uh, you'll also learn about polymorphism, um, also about templates. Um, and these are some of the tools that C++ uses to implement uh, what's called generic programming. Um, so uh, you can use things like polymorphism and templates to allow, say, a class to accept many different types of arguments um, or a function to accept uh, many different types of arguments with one function signature. Um, and that way your code is generic. It can accept um, lots of different types of arguments. Um, and there are, there are other um, uh, applications of generic programming as well that the uh, an object of the class can be used in many different ways um, and this is really important uh, for modern C++ and so you'll learn about that in uh, in this course um, and at the end of this course uh, you'll implement a process manager or a system manager um, in C++ um, this is uh, a screenshot of the uh, of the system manager on Linux called HTOP you'll build a, a slightly simplified version of HTOP as part of uh, the final project or as the final project for this object-oriented programming course. Uh, you'll use C++ to pull lots of 
data about the Linux file um, out of uh, uh, out of uh, the Udacity machines. We give you at, at Udacity um, uh, an online Linux desktop that you can program on. So you could either develop this on your own Linux machine if you have one, or on um, the Linux desktop you can access and code on through, uh, through the browser as part of the Udacity NanoDegree program. Um, you'll implement uh, a code to read files um, on Linux, uh, manipulate the data you get from those files, and you'll use the ncurses library um, to output information about those files and um, create a, a, the type of terminal-based um, graphical process manager that you see here that lists out um, all the different types of processes that are running on your system and how much memory and CPU um, and, uh, and other resources um, those processes on the system are consuming. Uh, so those are the first two months of the course, Foundations of C++ and then Object-Oriented Programming in C++. Um, the third month of the program is Memory Management, also taught by Erman Krepinich. Um, uh, memory management is extremely important to C++ in a way um, that is probably less noticeable in a lot of other languages. Many other languages have garbage collectors and um, take other steps to abstract away memory and resource management so um, that programmers don't have to uh, spend as much time thinking about how to acquire um, and then release resources. Um, in C++, uh, a lot of that work is done either explicitly or implicitly by the programmer, um, and that's part of what allows C++ to run very, very fast and very close to hardware, um, is that the programmer is designing uh, the program, or the engineer is designing the program um, to account for and allocate um, and release resources, um, as opposed to some sort of a global garbage collector um, getting run in the background. Um, so uh, part of a, a major part of memory management in C++ involves pointers, um, which are um, uh, variables that point to memory addresses. Um, uh, you tend to work with memory addresses in C++ um, much more directly than uh, in many other programming languages. References are, um, are another way to think of memory, am uh, memory addresses. References um, uh, are, es are essentially a memory address or they're, they're uh, a variable that represents a memory address whereas pointers are the things that uh, are variables that point to memory addresses. Um, but both of these are important. Um, for working directly with memory as opposed to copying variables in lots of different instances. Um, depending on the use case, it can be much more efficient um, to pass around a, a reference or a pointer to a memory address than to uh, make a deep copy of, of all of the uh, data inside of a, a class or an object. Um, uh, we'll also talk about scope, which is um, extremely important when, uh, when thinking about um, memory management and, and resource allocation. Um, C++ does not have a garbage collector, but the compiler will design the program so that uh, when a variable goes out of scope, all of the memory um, from that uh, used by that uh, variable or type is released automatically. And so understanding um, when a variable is in scope and when it goes out of scope is, is really important um, when uh, thinking or when writing a C++ program. Um, along with that is a uh, a, an acronym called RAII. Um, this is something uh, developed by Bjarne Struestrup um, back when he invented C++. Bjarne says he's the worst marketer in the world because uh, uh, almost anybody could have come up with a better uh, name than RAII. Um, uh, RAII stands for Resource Acquisition is Initialization. Um, uh, it's kind of another way of thinking about scope. Essentially, when you acquire um, resources for a variable, when you declare a variable, um, or when you instantiate an object of a class, um, that's when you're acquiring resources and you should um, already be thinking about um, uh, when to release them um, so that uh, you know, you've initialized the variable when you acquire the resources and then uh, you already understand when that variable or when that memory or those resources are going to be released. Um, you also learned about static versus dynamic memory. Um, dynamic memory is sometimes thought of um, as the heap, static memory sometimes as the stack. Um, uh, these are important concepts uh, uh, about computational architecture more generally, but particularly uh, related to C++, um, depending on how you declare and initialize a variable. Um, you may get the memory from different places. It may be faster or slower. You may have to think 
um, harder or, or not at all about how to uh, release that memory so that you don't have memory leaks. Um, it's a really important concept to understand when you're writing code in C++. Um, you'll also learn about smart pointers, which are um, a new type of pointer um, that C++ has made available just in the last few years um, that are uh, in some ways more intelligent than raw pointers. Um, these are pointers uh, that uh, the compiler um, compiles the program to keep track of automatically so that um, uh, it, it's kind of a weak form of garbage collection uh, so that you don't wind up with dangling pointers or, or memory leaks so easily. Um, and memory leaks are a really important uh, topic to think about when you cover memory management in C++ um, because as you're managing all of this memory yourself, it's, it's easy uh, to declare memory and then forget to release it, uh, to acquire resources, including memory, and forget to uh, release it or, or destroy um, those resources when you're done. Um, and that can lead to a degradation in performance and, and memory leaks over time. Um, the, uh, the project at the end of this month is to implement your own version of smart pointers. Um, I can't, uh, uh, I don't have a, a great visual for that project, so I don't have a, a slide for that, although we're working on finding a way to take that project, which is really a kind of system design or, or language design project, um, and give it a little bit of a visual output so that you have something kind of neat to, uh, to visualize um, the work that you've done in, in designing smart pointers. Um, Bjarne talks a lot about how, uh, how uh, as a, a language designer, uh, he's always very jealous of the, the robotics and the computer graphics um, engineers because they always have terrific demos. Uh, but when you're designing something like a, a operating system or a language, uh, your demos are, are often um, a lot more uh, muted and, and a lot of the work you've done is kind of silent or behind the scenes, not visual. Um, but hopefully we can, we can come up with a good visual for, uh, for this project. Um, so those are the first three months of the course. So we have foundations of C++, object-oriented programming in C++, and um, memory management. The fourth month of the course is um, parallel algorithms, including, or sorry, is concurrency. Uh, and this is taught by um, uh, Hussan uh, al Rubaye, who is a, an engineer, uh, C++ engineer uh, in New York State. Um, uh, has taught a number of courses in C++. Hussein uh, will be teaching about parallel algorithms, about processes, threads. Um, uh, these are all different ways um, to run different code uh, in C++ in parallel. Um, so uh, you could start with parallel algorithms, which are simply implementations of algorithms in the standard library that run in parallel, and you kind of get that acceleration for free as a developer um, because other people have written the code already. Um, processes and threads are different ways um, to spawn lines of execution um, on your operating system. Processes um, are a little more heavyweight and uh, as Moore's Law kind of run into a, a number of, of physics problems as, as the rate at which processors uh, accelerate has, uh, has slowed down on any one processor um, because of heat and other constraints. Um, one way that a lot more performance out of computers is having multi-core processors. Um, so instead of running one line of execution very, very fast on a processor, you might run um, four or eight or 16 lines of execution um, almost as fast, but because you're running you know, eight or 16 of them at a time, um, if you design your program right, if you design it to be concurrent, um, then you can have lots of different lines of execution all running at the same time, and you can get um, a pretty dramatic acceleration in, in programming performance. Um, so that's the fourth month of the program, and that's the final month of instruction. Um, and the project for this month will be cellular designing a cellular. Um, these are um, uh, graphical agents um, that uh, uh, you can spawn, and you can spawn um, lots of them, and they can all run kind of independently, and they can create uh, write to a file that will create a kind of. Uh, um, uh, abstract art almost um, with each agent uh, kind of making its own decisions about how it, uh, how it contributes uh, to the overall um, uh, file or, or structure um, that's being designed. Um, and it's a really neat way to run lots of different threads in parallel and also um, visualize uh, what each of those threads are doing and how that comes together into an, an aggregate um, uh, program output. Um, the final 
Next to the program will be the capstone project. Um, this is something designed by all of Udacity. Um, that's my picture there, David Silver, but this is really designed by um, uh, a number of different uh, colleagues of mine who are all working together to help build this, this program. Um, and the capstone project is an independent project for you to complete. It's not designed to be enormous. It's not a, a, you know, a PhD dissertation. It's designed just to be a couple week project that you do using um, the information that you learned, the skills you gained over, over the month of, of learning about C++, or sorry, the four months of learning that um, students really, really like, and so we're, we're rolling it out across many of our nano degree programs um, that you have this kind of independent uh, project almost that's a little bit unique to you. Um, and, uh, and we hope it works out really well for our C++ students. Um, so that's, uh, that's the end of the presentation. We'll, we'll shift now to Q&A, and I'm delighted and excited to answer any questions um, that, uh, that any of you have about the nano degree program, or about C++, or about Udacity, or me, or life, or uh, whatever you want to ask. Um, so I think uh, one of my colleagues is teeing up a bunch of those questions from, uh, uh, from uh, the chat, and uh, I'm excited to, uh, to address them. Uh, Let's see, what, what do we have? We have um, the first one is um, Jet Echo asks, how is this nano degree different than the C++ for programmers free class? Uh, that's a great question, uh, particularly because um, at least right now when you search uh, for Udacity C++, the, the free class is the first thing that pops up. Um, that class is, is several years old and so it's got uh, a little more Google power behind it, uh, SEO power. Um, but uh, it's a much shorter class, the free class. Um, it was designed actually by a, a different colleague of mine, Catherine Gambo, who's terrific. Um, uh, uh, is no longer at Udacity, but she designed it several years ago um, as a quick um, in, uh, introduction to C++ for programmers. Um, the intent of, the, of, of both programs is the same, to, to help teach people who are ready software engineers to write C++. Um, the C++ for programmers course is much shorter. It's a little bit, I guess you might call it a little incomplete in the sense that um, the answers we're not covering C++ 20. There are a few times, particularly in, in different places, talks um, in the course where he talks a lot about C++ 20. C++ 20 is um, the next major release of C++ that actually comes out next year. Uh, it includes um, uh, a number of, of major features. I actually have uh, an interview with Bjarne Strustrup. Um, it's a little bit separate than, from his teaching in the nano degree program. Um, uh, this interview will, I think, launch or will release it in the next few weeks. I filmed it in New York with him uh, last week, and he was talking a lot about C++ 20 um, and uh, particularly concepts, uh, which are a, a language feature um, uh, uh, related to uh, to generic programming um, that are releasing in C++ 20. We made the decision for this course to focus um, on C++ 17 because that's the standard um, that's supported by all major compilers right now, whereas C++ 20, um, different things are supported in different compilers. Everything Bjarne says in C++ 20 is supported on some compiler, but GCC supports some features, Clang supports other features, Microsoft's compiler supports other features. Um, so, so instead of, of uh, uh, teaching a, a standard that's not yet current, we'll, we'll teach the most current standard, and then uh, we'll you know we'll upgrade the course when C++ 20 is released. Um, David asks, does concurrency cover GPU programming? That is a, also another great question. Um, the answer is is that we focus concurrency um, simply on on the C++ specific. Um, uh, language uh, features that are relevant primarily for CPU um, acceleration. Acceleration, GPU acceleration um, often involves relying on things like CUDA or OpenCL, um, which are a couple of different standards outside of C++ um, that, uh, that enable acceleration on a GPU. Um, there are a few different things that, that complicate that. One, you have to have a GPU. Another is you have to learn these kind of uh, standards that are above and beyond normal C++. Um, so uh, it's possible we may cover GPU programming um, in another nano degree program or course at, at some point. I think um, that's super exciting. We debated whether to cover it for this program. But there's a lot to cover in concurrency simply around um, the parallel algorithms and processes and threads and multi-threaded programming and thread synchronization um, uh, more than enough to, to cover in, in one month on concurrency and I'm pretty excited that we're teaching it. Um, uh, Just Enjoy Music asks, can somebody with basic programming knowledge not coding on a daily basis make it in this program? 
That is a great question. Um, you know, if if uh, if three years at UDAC has taught me anything, it's that determination to learn a topic often trumps the the prerequisite knowledge uh, that somebody comes in with. Um, we've seen people uh, be successful in very advanced programs with relatively um, light uh, uh, engineering backgrounds or programming backgrounds um, if they are really, really determined to make it through the program. Um, that said, this. This nano degree program is designed for people who are already software engineers or software programmers who are looking to translate um, their knowledge of other languages to C++. Um, and so we move pretty quickly, particularly through that month on foundations. We don't spend a lot of time um, you know, thinking too hard about what does an if-else block do or how do functions work generally. Um, we, we kind of assume that that's background knowledge people are pretty comfortable with and, and we simply say, you know, here's how you, you do these things in C++. And so um, if you have a relatively light programming background, you might consider starting with our Intro to Programming Nano Degree um, or even our Intro to Self-Driving Cars Nano Degree program, which is a little more advanced than that, um, and getting a little more uh, programming experience under your belt. And then when you feel pretty comfortable as a programmer in a language like Python or JavaScript or Java or, or any one of a number of other languages, um, then this C++ Nano Degree program um, is, is really designed for someone at, at that level. Um, Shelley asks, Will it be possible to do a capstone project building some sort of interactive, interactive graphics, app, graphics app using OpenGL? Um, probably on references and smart pointers. Um, a lot of modern C++ um, involves avoiding um, pointers. Uh, raw pointers can be dangerous and hard to keep track of, and, and Bjarne Struschip himself will say that if you're using a lot of raw pointers, then you might be doing something wrong. Um, and so we, we spend a lot of time on things like references and pointer or references and smart pointers and, and scope um, and and how do you use some of the features of the language and the compiler to do memory management for you rather than doing a ton of of messing around with raw pointers but we do spend you know a little bit of time um, talking about pointers and references and going through a lot of different examples about how you uh, uh, create a pointer dereference a pointer um, uh, uh, relate a pointer to a reference and things like that. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Gaga also says, just finishing a class in C++ which covered the foundations, including STL, which is the standard library. I started learning concurrency, allocators, type traits. Do you think this class will give me more on top? Um, I think so. I guess it depends a little bit on you know, what your, your previous class covered and how thorough it was. Um, I will say one of the things about Udacity um, that we pride ourselves on is just the amount of, of code that we set up for students to write. We have this saying at Udacity um, that you don't lose weight by watching other people exercise. Uh, if you want to become a C++ engineer, you really um, need to write the code yourself, and that's true for any type of, of engineering work you, you want to do. Um, that, that saying, you don't lose weight by watching other people exercise, comes directly from Sebastian Thrun, our founder, who uh, wrote a lot of the C++ that created modern self-driving cars. Um, and so depending on you know, what class you took, um, you may or may not have written quite a bit of C++. You certainly will write a lot of C++ if you enroll in this nano degree program. Um, and one of the things we do is we, we, we don't cover everything you might imagine you could cover in, in four and a half months because we spend a lot of time um, building exercises and projects. You know, if, if all you're doing is watching videos for four and a half months, you can watch a lot of videos, um, but then you get to the end and you may not actually really know how to write code. Um, in, in this class, you may watch fewer videos and spend a lot more time uh, writing code. Um, how will the projects be structured? Are we given skeleton codes to work on? Or do we build the projects from scratch following the given requirements? Um, that's a great, another great question. We tend to build most of our projects from scratch. Um, you know, we don't want to uh, set students up with too many projects where we give them so much skeleton code that the student finishes uh, a project and they feel like they didn't actually really do the project themselves or they couldn't recreate it because they don't know how all this skeleton code worked. In some cases where there's skeleton code that's uh, repetitive or for some reason you know, it, it doesn't really make sense to have students spend a lot of time on that, we might give students some code and say here's how we design this. Um, you can use this code if you want or you can rewrite it yourself from scratch. But most of the projects you're kind of building from the ground up. Um, let's see, Pericles. Uh, asks, can you please speak more to applications of C++ um, and how C++ differs from other languages, its common uses, and future? Um, 
C++ is what I can think of as a what I think of as a compiled high performance programming language. Um, I think of C++ as the type of language and, and maybe the primary language that you might use if the performance and execution uh, velocity of your code is a primary concern. Um, if uh, if the primary concern is as often the case is how long it takes a developer to write the code, then you might choose another language like Python um, that, or, or JavaScript or, or many other different types of languages um, that are maybe a little bit um, easier and quicker to write, um, but maybe don't run quite as fast. Um, but when you're running code, it, particularly in a resource constrained environment that has to run very quickly, um, um, uh, I think this is a, a course that will teach you um, how to be a, a really good um, C++ developer, and that can be really important for uh, um, uh, for uh, becoming a game engineer. Um, uh, my uh, my colleague uh, uh, running the the video stream says we lost my answer uh, uh, on. Uh, on the question about the game industry, so I'll just repeat that real quick. Um, I think this nano degree program could be really helpful to somebody working, looking to work in the game industry. A lot of game engines um, and physics engines are written in C++ because of the need um, for super high performance um, and also the need to leverage GPUs and a lot of GPU code is written in C++. Um, we don't teach game engines specifically um, in this program. We don't teach how to work with game engines like Unreal or, or Unity or other engines. Um, but, um, but we do teach how to become a, a really good C++ engineer, and that's really important for working in a lot of different roles in the gaming industry. Um, or game industry, I guess I should say. Gaming industry often means gambling, which this could potentially be useful for, but, but that's a different question. Um, Turi asks, um, can you expand on what level of programming skill you recommend for taking this class? I can hack together scripts, but I'm not a great programmer. Um, sometimes I feel that way, too. Um, uh, I think uh, the, this, this nanodegree program is targeted um, at the same type of student who might enroll in our robotics or our machine learning or our self-driving car nanodegree programs. These are people who you know, aren't necessarily uh, uh, software wizards, but they are comfortable developing software. Um, if, if the idea of, of writing a, a larger program that maybe has um, a number of classes um, and, uh, and some interfaces between the classes, if that type of idea seems a little bit um, overwhelming um, to you, then uh, a program like our Intro to Self-Driving Cars or our Intro to Programming Nano Degrees um, is a great way um, uh, to get started, as well as some of our more application-specific nano degree programs, like say our, our full stack uh, web developer nano degree is another great way to get more programming experience. Um, but if, if you feel pretty comfortable, like writing a few classes and um, and developing um, you know some some um, interfaces uh, for those classes, then I think um, then I think you're ready uh, to take uh, the C plus plus nano degree program. We, we certainly don't expect you to be um, you know. Uh, uh, you know, in the top 1% of, of software engineers anywhere. Uh, you know, we want this to be an accessible class. We also, you know, want it to be a class that, that really helps people who, who are comfortable with software engineering and make, turns you into a really good C++ engineer. Um, uh, Antal says, I have a front-end degree, but I want a better understanding of programming principles and to get some skills that are useful in some way in the web development field. Would you recommend this degree? Um, that's hard. I guess I would say if, if what you are looking for at Udacity is um, a, a better understanding of web development more generally, our full stack nano degree is terrific, as are um, uh, our Rea or as is our React nano degree program, um, and we're building, I, I believe, some other programs in that vein um, that are super useful. Um, C plus plus, as I mentioned, is a language that uh, some companies are rewriting their their web applications in because uh, you know at massive scale um, performance becomes really important. Um, and so if you're interested in uh, becoming a C++ engineer at a company um, that is doing that, at a company uh, often that has massive amounts of traffic on their, on their web applications, um, then this would be a super useful nano degree program. Um, but if you're, you're interested in becoming you know, uh, your kind of normal uh, web developer in you know, developing websites in different types of, of frameworks or like Node or React or Angular, um, then this isn't really a course that covers that. We're really covering the C++ programming language um, in this course and, and JavaScript and Python and uh, I guess in the, in the bad old days PHP and Perl uh, were, are, are some of the languages that are more relevant to those types of web frameworks. Um, 
Max asks, um, are the whole content and all projects accessible from the start of the program in May, or are they still being created like it, wa like it was in the case of the self-driving car nano degree? Max, you sound like you are a, a, an experienced Udacity student. Um, that is a, a great question. Um, and the answer is we are still building out um, uh, the, the memory management and concurrency um, uh, courses in the nano degree program, so both the, um, the foundations course and the object oriented programming course uh, and projects will be available at launch. Um, the memory management and concurrency courses should be available within, I would guess, a few weeks after launch. We're pretty close on those, um, uh, but uh, I think we probably will launch, as is often the case at Udacity, without everything being, being quite um, buttoned up. Um, uh, and, and we should be able to, to finish everything uh, you know, within a, a relatively short time frame after we launch the program. Um, Steve, th and this is the last question, um, what is the job demand for C++ engineers? There are so many jobs for C++ engineers. Um, that is a, a, a great question because uh, C++ is a skill that so many different employers are, are looking to hire for. And it's, it's actually become a little bit of a hard skill to find, particularly for what's called modern C++. Uh, you know, a lot of people were in C++, at least a lot of people my age, uh, uh, and this kind of reminds me that I'm not as young as I used to think I was. Uh, a lot of people were in C++. Uh, those engineers are hard to find in a lot of embedded systems applications, Internet of Things, um, robots, um, automotive applications, not only self-driving cars, but also just normal automobile development, um, surgical robot surgical development, um, machine learning, even artificial intelligence is a really important um, domain for C++ engineers because uh, you know while you might train your machine learning models using a language like Python, um, uh, once it's time to deploy that language, you often uh, want to use C++ to deploy it, uh, depending on you know, exactly what type of system you're deploying it on. Um, and it's relatively hard to find engineers who are trained in both things like machine learning and deep learning, but also have C++ skills. Um, so that's another area where if you have kind of a mix of skills, you can be really, really valuable. Um, uh, but the, the kind of uh, summary version of that is there are a lot of players looking for C++ engineers, which you can find if you just go to a job search engine and type in C++. Um, you know, there are um, all sorts of different applications. Games are another one that came up um, uh, where, where employers are looking for people who know C++. Um, uh, I was, uh, I saw that we lost the uh, the start of this answer on the stream. I apologize for the, the streaming difficulty. So I'll, I'll just repeat the start of the answer by saying this is a great question, and uh, um, uh, the answer is that lots of employers are looking for C++ engineers, particularly modern C++ engineers. Um, a lot of people uh, around my age learned C++ in the late 90s or early 2000s of their first programming languages. Um, a lot of people who started um, learning to code after that never learned C++ because they jumped straight to languages like Java or Python or JavaScript. A match of skills or mix of skills for employers to find and one that lots of employers are looking for. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for sitting in on, uh, on um, this introduction to our C++ nanodegree program. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you're excited about C++ and, and hopefully even about the nanodegree program. Um, but I am really uh, uh, um, excited about, about teaching and being involved in this program. Um, I've learned a lot just through um, developing the program with great instructors um, and also with Bjarne Strustrup, um, who's been very gracious with his time and, and helping to advise us on how to structure the program and, and uh, also helping to, to talk a little bit in the program and, and explain you know, why things are the way they are in C++. I think that you will really, really enjoy the program as well, and I hope you enroll and join us in the classroom. Uh, see you soon.